couple months ago, I made a tutorial all about how to just shoot a great time lapse, and it seemed like you guys really enjoyed that video, but I also saw a lot of comments requesting a tutorial specifically about how to shoot a night lapse, how to go out and capture the stars. So today I just want to take you through the entire process, planning, gear, camera settings, editing, everything that you need to know to shoot a great night lapse. And I'm also going to talk a bit later on in this video about the sponsor of this video, which is LoomCube. They have a few new products that just came out today, but we'll get to that later on. But first, I'm on the floor right now because we need to pack the gear that we're going to use to shoot this night lapse. Let's start out with the camera. I'm going to be using the Panasonic Lumix G7. This is an older, much cheaper camera than most of the other options on the market. The reason I love to use this camera for time lapses is because it has a great built-in intervalometer or time lapse mode. But if your camera doesn't have a built-in intervalometer or it's not very useful, then you're going to need to pick up one of these. This is an external intervalometer. Basically, this is just something that plugs into your camera and tells it to take photos at given intervals, like taking a photo every 20 seconds or every two minutes. You get the idea. Next, let's talk a bit about lens choice. And this is a terrible lens to use for a night lapse. It's an 85 millimeter, but it's like my coolest looking lens. So that's why I'm holding it. It's preferable to use a lens with a wider aperture, something like f 2.4 or preferably even like 1.8 or 1.4. That way you're going to be able to let in as much light as possible and capture that tiny little bit of light that you get from the stars in as much detail and quantity as you possibly can. It's also preferable to use a wide angle lens for night lapses because you're not going to have noticeable star trails in the images. If you're shooting with something like a 35 or a 50 millimeter lens, then you're going to end up having noticeable trails from the stars instead of them just being little points like you want them to be. Another good thing to have for a night lapse is external power. So like a larger battery or power bank that you can plug into your camera to keep it going throughout the night. So you're probably going to have your camera set up and running while you're asleep. So for a long time, completely unattended. So you're going to want to have something like this so that when your camera battery would die after a couple of hours of shooting, it's not going to just end your time lapse and you can keep going for the entirety of you know, the time that it's dark before the sun comes up. If you don't have one of these or you don't feel like buying one, you can also take multiple just like regular camera batteries and get up every couple hours throughout the night and switch them out so that your camera doesn't die and you're able to capture that entire span of time. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is a little more convenient if you have the option. And finally, something that's not completely mandatory 100% of the time, but that will give you a ton of new creative opportunities for better exposure and lighting effects is a very portable battery powered light, such as this one from LoomCube, which I've been using throughout this shot as, you know, kind of like a hair light for this main angle. This is what I'm gonna be using a little bit later on uh, to light the night lapse, to give it a little more character and give it a little more even exposure. But more on that later. And finally, one that I think is pretty self-explanatory is a tripod. My camera's on it right now, but don't forget to take your tripod or you're kind of going to be SOL for shooting a good night lapse. Uh, all that being said, if you don't have any of these and you want to pick them up, there will be links in the description where you can check those out and order them for yourself. But that being said, let's pack all this stuff up and get going. Just for the record, this is not the correct way to pack for a shoot. Please don't just throw all your stuff in your camera bag like that. But it's, I mean, it's for the video. Come on, it's not that deep. So pretty soon we will be talking about the fun stuff, like how to set up your shot and what camera settings to use. But first, just like, you know, pretty much any of my videos, I'm sure you've heard this one before, we got to talk about planning because it's super important and you can plan a lot of elements to make sure that you get the best night time lapse possible. So how are, you know, what are a few different ways that you can research and plan to get the best result you possibly can? That rhyme.
I am frame. So it's it's a little difficult to set focus right now because I I left I brought my microphone, but I forgot like the hot shoe mount that attaches it to the top of the camera. So our current setup looks a little something like this. Uh, just use the camera strap, you know, tighten that boy down. Probably the most, not necessarily most important, but like most predictable, like understandable part of planning for a night lapse is understanding moon phases. So the moon follows a pattern that repeats like every month or so. So you'll have a full moon where the moon is most visible, then two weeks later a new moon where it's not visible at all, and then in two weeks it's back to a full moon. And where you want to shoot a night lapse to have maximum visibility of the stars is right around the new moon because the more the moon is visible, the brighter it is in the sky, the more it's going to pollute your frame with light basically and make it to where those stars are washed out and less visible. So usually when I'm planning to shoot a night lapse or just take photos of the stars, I'll try to aim to be within a few days of that new moon so that there's minimal visibility of the moon and maximum visibility of the stars. And for this video, I wasn't really gonna think too much about it since it's just, you know, a tutorial example, but I actually hit the nail right on the head accidentally and tonight is actually the new moon. So hopefully we're gonna get some pretty good star visibility in this area tonight. So in addition to moon phases, another thing you need to understand is moon set and moon rise. So even if it's not a new moon and you have the moon kind of messing with your star visibility, there are certain times during the night when it's going to set and then rise. So if you shoot after it's set and before it's risen, you're gonna have less light pollution from the moon. Finally, weather. Uh, obviously the weather is being very nice to us right now, but there are specific weather conditions that are best for night shooting. Having some clouds isn't like a total deal breaker unless it's like completely overcast, but you do need to keep in mind that any clouds in the sky are going to obscure the stars. So if your only goal is to like capture the Milky Way and see the night sky in your time lapse, then you're probably gonna wanna try and shoot on a very clear day but I've still gotten plenty of really cool night lapses that had some clouds in them. As you can tell, I'm a little out of breath from running up this hill, but the view up here, oh my God. And finally, there's one tool that I use as kind of a final step for planning to figure out the composition of the shot and how I should actually set up my camera angle when I'm on location setting up my camera. And that is an app called Photo Pills. It costs like $10, but it's absolutely worth it. It's this really cool augmented reality app that allows you to basically, you know, point your camera around, you, your phone camera, and see where the Milky Way is going to be most visible. You can also see like where the sun and the moon are gonna be, when the moon's gonna set, when the sun's gonna rise, all these really cool things. So if I just use the night AR feature right here and find the Milky Way right there and I can see how it's gonna be moving throughout the night and I can see that it's basically going to be right back here behind me and then move across the landscape to the right. So I think I'm gonna set up my shot to where I have this tree on one side of the frame and then this nice pointy mountain peak 
on the other side. That way we have a really cool composition and we're not like pointing our camera in the wrong direction and completely missing the stars, which is a very real possibility if you don't use a tool like this when you're setting up. So let's go ahead and set up this shot. But first, let's talk a bit about the sponsor of today's video, Loom Cube and the Panel Pro, which is their new product that just came out today. So today, Loom Cube launched this guy, the Panel Pro. It's a very portable, very bright LED light panel designed for photographers and videographers. It has a nice frosted lens on the front for diffusion, three quarter 20 mounts on the sides so that you can attach it to like a tripod and mount it that way. And it also has a nice screen on the back so that you can see the brightness, the color, and a bunch of different controls that you have over this light panel. The screen is great, but it also has Bluetooth so you can control it using the LoomCube app if that's what you prefer to do. It has a full range of brightness and color of light and it also has like some fun lighting effects that you can use with it as well. What's great about it as well in the context of shooting a night lapse like we are today is that it has a much longer battery life than most other light panels on the market. And I really like that on the screen, it shows you not only the percentage of the battery that's remaining, but how long that battery is going to last on the given setting. So I can set it up and make sure that it's not gonna die after like three hours and ruin our time lapse. In addition to the Panel Pro, they also just released the Panel Go and the Panel Mini alongside it. The Panel Mini is actually what I'm using to light myself right now, which are similar products with slightly fewer features that are kind of designed for a different market, but worth looking into as well. I've been using the original Loom Cube for like over a year now, it goes everywhere I go, stays in my camera bag all the time. I've used it to shoot some different sequences in some of my videos and I use it all the time just as a flashlight so that I don't die when I'm doing sunset hikes and hiking out in the dark like I will be in a few minutes. There will be a link in the description to where you can check these out for yourself. But that being said, let's go ahead, set up this night lapse using this, of course, and talk a bit about camera settings for shooting a night lapse. So now that we're getting this shot set up, let's talk a little bit about camera settings for shooting a night lapse. Starting out with shooting raw. This is something I would recommend you do no matter what you're shooting, but it's most important for shooting the night sky because it's going to be dark. So you need to preserve as much detail as possible so you can bring back that dark detail in post. You also wanna have your aperture as wide open as it goes just to let in as much light as possible. So since this lens goes down to a maximum aperture of f2.8, I've got it at f2.8. You're also gonna be shooting with a very slow shutter speed, probably somewhere between 15 and 60 seconds. I'm probably gonna use 60 to let in as much light as possible and shoot the stars. But you want to be careful not to go like too long, like several minutes, because you're going to get star trails, which might be what you're going for, but most of the time it isn't. Also, try not to raise your ISO a ton. If you can, keep it at your native ISO, probably something around 200 or on most cameras, 400. Because when you're shooting a long exposure, that noise is really going to pile up. So any amount that you bump the ISO up, you're going to be introducing a lot of grain into the image. To set up the shot, what you want to do is start by taking a single photo and then adjusting what you need to. Focus, lighting, camera angle to get the shot to where you want it to be. I'm going to be using the Panel Pro and putting it right under this tree so we have a cool light on that tree and add some detail into the shot that way. So I'm going to go out, put it there, take a photo, and then if it's too bright, I'm going to lower the brightness. Too dim, I'm going to raise the brightness and just monitor and adjust until I get the shot looking crispy. And if you're using external lighting like me, you're going to want to make sure that you have it at a very low brightness, which shouldn't be a problem over a long exposure because that tiny bit of light only needs to compete with the stars. So when you're exposing for 60 seconds, any tiny amount of light in the scene is going to really make a difference in the shot. And it's important to have the battery on your light lower than you would normally have it because you want it to last all night so that you can have it going throughout the entire shot. And finally, you're going to use either an external internal intervalometer or your camera's time-lapse mode to make the camera take photos at double your shutter speed. So since I'm using a 60 second shutter speed, I'm going to tell this guy to take photos every two minutes so that we're following that 180 degree rule and also giving the camera time to process the images in between shots. And then once you've done that, just attach your external power if you need to so that your camera lasts the entirety of the shot 
set up your lighting, and then you're good to go. If you couldn't tell, I'm kind of rushing through this part because it is really freaking cold. <laughs> It doesn't, doesn't look very good. You thought it was just gonna look perfect straight out of camera? Come on. There's always editing to do in Aiden Robin's video. So let's crack open Lightroom and fix it in post. Okay, we're not actually fix, we're not like fixing anything that we did wrong. We're more just enhancing it in post. So as you can see here, I've opened up this entire time lapse in Lightroom just imported all of those raw photos and it's time to start working on these. And as you can see, it looks pretty cool already. It's a cool composition, the tree's nicely lit. We got some Milky Way showing up in the back just like we wanted, but there are a few subtle tweaks or not so subtle tweaks that we can make to make this look a little better. Firstly, with a lot of night lapses, you'll notice that it has like an overall warmer cast. So we're just gonna go over to the white balance option. And I usually just change this to auto and Lightroom does a pretty good job of fixing it and getting it to where it should be. But you can also come in here and manually adjust it to get it to a color temperature that you like. But auto looks good enough for me on this one. So the name of the game here is to bring back as much detail from the shadows as you can without completely ruining the image. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab the slider for the shadows and just bring that up. And we'll see even once I bring that all the way up, we're only seeing a little bit of detail come back from the shadows. So the next step is to grab the exposure slider, bring that up, and we'll start to see a pretty noticeable change. In fact, once I'm bringing that exposure up for the entire image, we can see the tree is actually getting a little too bright. So I'm gonna bring the highlights down to compensate. And now we've got a pretty good even exposure throughout this image. Now, if we scroll down a little bit from those exposure sliders, we'll see the clarity and dehaze sliders. And these can be useful, but you need to be a little careful with them. They can be useful because if we start to bring these up, then we'll start to see some more definition in the Milky Way and the night sky overall. But you also have to be careful because if we zoom in, we'll start to see the image just getting a little contrasty and having like weird, harsh edges. So if you wanna bring back some detail and clarity in the night sky, I would recommend bringing these up just a little bit, but definitely don't overdo it. Finally, let's scroll down a bit and denoise the image just a touch. As you can see with most night lapses, since you're bringing those shadows up so much, you're inevitably gonna be introducing a little bit of grain into the shadows. As you can see, it shows up the most here in the mountain towards the edge of the frame. So I'm just gonna bring that noise reduction up and we should start to see some of that go away. But once again, this is a slider that you need to be careful with because it can be useful, but as you see up here, when we bring that noise reduction up, we start to lose some of that finer detail in the night sky. So it's really all about finding that balance, bringing back the detail and getting a clean, even looking image without ruining the detail throughout the photo. So now, once I've gotten this edit to a point that I'm happy with, I'm just gonna copy all of the adjustments that I've made here, and then I'm gonna go to the very last frame of the time-lapse paste them on because this is where we will have seen the most change in terms of lighting and where things are in the frame. And if it still looks good on the last frame, then I'll go ahead, hit Command A to select all of these, right click, and then paste the attributes or the develop settings. Once that's done, while I still have all of these selected, I'm gonna hit Command Shift E to export all of them. You're gonna wanna rename them to something that's consistent throughout all of them. So I'm just gonna name these Night Lapse, very creative. That way they'll all have a similar name and we'll get to this in a minute so that when you import them into Premiere, you can import them as an image sequence and Premiere will know what to do. We'll get to that. Then I'm just gonna choose the export location. And for this, what I almost always do is find the folder that I've made for the time lapse. So I make a separate folder within my footage folder for just that time lapse. And then I separate it out by JPEG and RAW. And then I'm just gonna add another folder called this processed. And these will be all of the processed images by themselves in that folder. 
once again so that we can import them into Premiere. Then I'm just gonna hit export and then we just wait for a while. This takes a while. Ha <laughs> Hey, it's done. All right, now I've opened up a new project in Premiere and we can just go ahead and import our time lapse. And the way you do that is navigate to that folder that's just the processed photos. Here it is. Click on the first one, then come down to options and check off this box that says image sequence. And then because they have these sequential file names, when we hit import, Premiere is going to import all of those together as if they are a video. But that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Thanks again to LoomCube for sponsoring this one. It was fun to test this little guy out and feature it in this video. If you enjoyed this video, learned something new, feel free to show your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload new videos just like this every single week-ish. And I also post a ton of work over on Instagram. You're missing out on like a whole other portion of what I do online if you're not following me on Instagram, at Aiden Robbins. But that being said, keep creating, and I'll see you in the next video. Go out there, shoot a dope-ass night lapse, and send it to me so I can see what you made after watching this video. All right, see you in the next one.